So one of the questions I get most often on this channel is how can I get stronger and more powerful without also getting bigger and bulkier? It seems that people want this slimmer physique that belies their hidden strength and power. Think One Punch Man or Bruce Lee. So is this possible? Well, the fact that one of those examples was a real person suggests that it probably is. But of course there are some challenges and that's what I'm gonna talk about here. So the problem with trying to get stronger without necessarily getting bigger is that a lot of the triggers, the stimuli that lead to more strength also lead to increased hypertrophy, muscle growth. They are mechanical tension, metabolic stress, and muscle damage. Each of these things is used to build more strength, but it will also cause more muscle size. Fortunately, there are some factors, some variables that influence strength without having a big impact on size, and that's what we're gonna focus on here. It's not just so much about the muscle you have as it is your ability to use that muscle efficiently. Obviously, there's some low hanging fruit, some easy wins that we should focus on first. For example, you want to cut away fat. If you strip back the added layer of subcutaneous fat, then you're going to look leaner without losing any strength. Another thing we can do is to build more tendon strength. And there are several ways you can do this. I made a video on it in the past. I'll link that in the description down below. Stronger tendons will contribute to greater strength and they won't make you look a whole lot bigger. Similarly, building a stronger grip will make you stronger in nearly everything you do without making you look any bigger. Maybe your hands will look thicker, your hand tendons and perhaps your forearms your overall size and physique isn't going to look like that of the Hulk. There are lots of ways we can train our strength. I knew some rock climbers at university who had incredible gripping strength. They would do fingerboard pull-ups with tons of weights in a backpack and these guys were very light and slim looking. Rock climbing is also an example of doing something that will naturally improve your strength to weight ratio. But something that's much more interested that I'm interested in is a technique that was actually used by Bruce Lee himself, as well as another guy who has a very slight frame but is capable of exerting incredible feats of strength and power. That's Dennis Rogers. And I am, of course, talking about something I've talked about on this channel a fair bit before. That's overcoming isometrics. So overcoming isometrics are movements where you're pushing or pulling against something that's too heavy for you to move. So you might be doing a bench press, but the weight's too heavy. So you're just pushing against the bar, not making any progress. Likewise, you could be trying to tear a piece of rope in half or push a wall down. There are plenty of tools you can use to do this. You can use resistance machines that are locked in place or that have too much weight on them. You can use tools from companies like Bulwarker that make a bunch of cool things that are great for training your isometric strength. Or you can just use your own body weight to try and lift yourself in positions that you aren't able to move yourself in. To get the best results, I've made videos on this in the past, but just quickly, you want to hold each contraction for about six seconds using maximum force, every inch of strength you can muster. And you want to make sure you train at three different joint angles at least because it only has an area of effect of about 30 degrees. The reason this works is because you're telling your body you need more strength than you have access to. Normally when we exert strength, we're only capable, even when we try and be as strong as possible, of utilizing around 30% of our muscle fiber, if you're an untrained individual, up to about 75% for an elite athlete. And due to Henneman's size principle, the last motor units you recruit, the last bundles of muscle fibers, are actually the ones that contain the fastest and strongest and largest muscle fibers that would give you the most strength. So you have all of this untapped power waiting that you can't unlock and you can't utilize in your movements. There are plenty of reasons for this, such as injury prevention, but it also just comes down to practice. You aren't able to coordinate that movement well enough. You're not able to send a strong enough signal to recruit all those muscle fibers because you haven't practiced doing it. And that's exactly what you're doing when you use a one rep max or an overcoming isometric. You're pushing or pulling as hard as you can and you're sending the strongest signal possible and you get better at doing this over time such that you have a stronger link between the mind and the muscle. Using those one rep maximums will do this and that's why that's such a great way to build a lot of strength. But at the same time, it has limitations. Due to the strength curve, there's only probably one point in that movement where you're actually exerting the most force. A lot of it's gonna be momentum. Some positions are gonna be easier than others as you go through the repetition. At the same time, the repetition itself only takes a very short window of time. However, with an overcoming isometric, you're able to hold that contraction, that maximum contraction for as long as possible, really sending that neural drive and practicing and strengthening that ability to command your full strength. Because there's no movement, because this is a static contraction, because the contractions are still relatively short, you're not causing much metabolic buildup, and you're not causing much muscle damage. You won't tear much of the muscle fiber. A lot of this happens during the eccentric portion of a movement. You're not building more muscle, you're improving your efficiency and your ability to command the muscle that you already have. 
So that is intramuscular coordination, your ability to coordinate different muscle fibers within a single muscle. But what's just as interesting, perhaps more so, is intermuscular coordination, your ability to utilize multiple different muscle groups together in the right order and with the right synchronicity in order to exert the maximum force through a certain movement pattern. So what I'm talking about here is practicing technique. And this is something we see all the time with martial artists. A martial artist can deliver a much more powerful punch than a bodybuilder who's never thrown a punch before because they've rehearsed that movement over and over again and thus they're able to engage the right muscles at the right time and even relax the ones that would otherwise slow them down. But this also applies to strength movements. And this is what I talked about in a previous video again on skill acquisition and greasing the groove. Pavel Tatsulin talks about strength as a skill. So you can get stronger simply by practicing. And if you want to practice more without getting bigger, then you just spread that practice throughout the day. And this is where the greasing the groove comes in. So Pavel suggests, for example, if you have a pull-up bar in your doorway, then every time you go through that door, do a few pull-ups and you'll get a bit stronger because you'll be rehearsing the movement pattern. You're only doing a couple, you're not going to fail, you're not causing any muscle damage. So you're not gonna get bulkier from doing this. You're just gonna get more efficient at doing pull-ups and so you get stronger. But if you wanna be stronger in the real world, then rehearsing pull-ups and rehearsing curls isn't quite gonna cut it. There's this trope in anime where often the biggest and strongest characters are actually weaker than the small and unusual looking characters. This is something that Toriyama likes to do in particular. At last Frieza decides to show himself. And from here he doesn't look so tough anymore. And at some point there'll be a scene where the big hulking creature will throw this massive punch or blast at the little guy who will just lift a finger and block it without even seeming to move, without even seeming to need to get into a defensive stance. They can just be strong from that angle with seemingly no effort. That's what real, wiry, unassuming power would look like. And perhaps unusually, the closest thing we have to that in real life is farmer strength. So you might have heard of farmer strength. It's this kind of urban myth that farmers and other manual workers have got a whole lot of extra strength. They're surprisingly powerful despite not necessarily practicing any kind of strength sport. Likewise, you might have heard of dad strength. This is the notion that dads have got this kind of unusual wiry strength. You might remember as a kid, your dad grabbing your wrist when you're being naughty and having a seemingly unshakable vice-like grip. Where does that come from? Because they're practicing movements that will help them to build that intermuscular coordination at the same time as strengthening tendons and grip strength. Because they're moving all throughout the day, the farmer or the manual laborer is doing manual work and the dad is lifting his kid on his shoulders and running around and carrying heavy bags. Because you're doing that throughout the day, you're rehearsing that movement and strengthening yourself. But at the same time, you're doing that in standing up positions, in moving dynamic, changeable positions so for an example, go and stand by a wall. Stand completely straight so your legs are side by side and your arms are down by your side. Stand about 40 centimeters away from the wall, facing it dead on. Now lift one arm up to about shoulder height and then push against the wall as hard as you can. You'll find that even if you have a 150 kilogram bench press normally, you're probably not able to exert more than about 30 kilograms of force here. And the reason is because you're only as strong as the weakest link. And at the same time, you have to coordinate lots of different muscles all at once from this mechanically disadvantaged position. So what's actually happening is you're stabilizing your shoulder, you're engaging your core, your rectus abdomini to prevent yourself from bending backwards and your obliques to prevent, prevent yourself from twisting. You're digging through your glutes to keep your legs straight. And even through your feet will be digging into the ground. And it's your ability to use these muscles together that exerts that force. It's not all just about pecs and tricep like it is in a bench press. This is how you use your body in real life. And this is what we don't really practice. But the farmer or the dad who's constantly on the move is constantly having to practice these unusual positions and strengthen their movement patterns in ways that are more unpredictable like this. Imagine digging a hole for a moment. Each time you dig a hole with a big spade, you're jabbing the spade into the ground with a lot of force. This is a ballistic movement. Then you're leveraging the spade up, which is gonna feel heavy because of that mound of dirt on the end. And then you're moving it, twisting your body to one side and dumping it over there then you're performing the movement again and you're doing this again and again throughout the day. I don't know if digging holes is something farmers do, by the way, I'm, I'm not a farmer. But as you do this, the hole also gets deeper, so you're changing your position, you're stooping more. Then throughout the rest of the day, you might be carrying bales of hay, pushing tractors, wrestling pigs, or whatever else it is that farmers probably do. Point is, you're practicing strength in all these different positions without necessarily developing size. At the same time, you're also building tendon strength and grip strength, which is something else we talked about. And as a result, you have this wiry, 
unassuming farmer strength. Of course, you don't have to become a professional farmer to get that kind of strength. There are ways to incorporate this sort of training into your routine. You can do it with cable machines, any kind of exercise where you're standing up, and at the same time with things like animal movements, where you're just moving your body in more dynamic ranges of motion, more unpredictable positions. Training outside makes a huge difference as well. Of course, any kind of movement like this where you're exerting force from a standing position, using more functional real world type movements, whether that's flipping a tire or hitting it with a sledgehammer or throwing a medicine ball, all these things are gonna require you to use your core and your limbs in a more cohesive manner, the way that you use them in the real world. And that will not only help to improve your strength and your ability to coordinate all those muscles together, you'll also build up those smaller supportive muscles in your core and other regions that don't add a lot to your overall size but do contribute a lot to your strength and your performance. Finally, we can also combine this all with explosive movements because we don't just want to be strong slowly, we want to be strong quickly. Using plyometric and ballistic movements means things like clapping push-ups, clapping pull-ups, depth jumps, squat jumps, and doing this improves our rate of force development. So that's the ability to not only recruit maximum muscle fiber, but to do so quickly. But we're not actually gaining a lot of size because the amount of time where the actin and myosin filaments are engaged there's just not enough time to cause enough muscle damage to stimulate hypertrophy. So yeah, by leaning out, by training your grip strength, by training your tendons, and by training lots of different unique positions and practicing strength, you can become much more powerful without necessarily adding a whole lot of bulk. Of course, I don't think there's anything inherently wrong with adding bulk as long as it isn't causing you to slow down, as long as you keep your strength relative to that size. In fact, there's lots of advantages to hypertrophy, apart from anything else, it acts as a kind of armor when you get hit. At the same time, there are many things that are easier to train if you allow yourself that hypertrophy as well. So don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but as a thought experiment, I thought this was quite interesting. The point is though that a lot of the training that focuses on strength without adding size is often overlooked in modern training programs because so many people are more interested in aesthetics. And it turns out that if you're really interested in power, then many of these overlooked aspects of training are the things that you should really be paying more attention to. So hope you found this video useful and interesting guys. If you did then please leave a like and share it around. That helps me out immensely. Comment down below and let me know whether you're more interested in hypertrophy, strength, or a combination of the two. If you like this philosophical alternative approach to training that's about more than just aesthetics, then you'll probably be interested in my ebook and training program, Super Functional Training. There I go into all kinds of unexplored and different aspects of training relating to strength, but also power, explosiveness, mobility, endurance, even brain training. And then I combine it all into a training program right at the end. If that sounds cool, then there's a link to that in the description down below and there's a discount on whilst we're all in lockdown. Alternatively, you could consider joining the Patreon group. A huge thank you to all of my current Patreons. Not only will you get access to some exclusive content, but you'll also be invited to join the secret Bionia group on Facebook, where we talk about our own training, different and unique training methods, as well as anything interesting that we find on the web. So we'd love to see you there. I'll put a link to that in the description down below also. Either way, thank you so much for watching this one. Subscribe if you want more like it, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Trees. Yeah.